Ojibari, congratulations. Thank you. We have several questions in the queue. The first comes from Carter Hill of Fifth Quarter. Carter, your line is unmuted. You can ask your question. Hey, Javari, uh, congrats on the win. Do you think you guys made a statement today kind of laying it to the Big East champ? And what do you think you showed fans that may not have, or what do you think you proved to fans that may not have been able to watch you all season long? Uh -huh. uh, well, it was crazy coming into this game. Uh, we were like the underdog, even being the five seed, uh, everybody had us losing this game. So we just, we met, I think it was yesterday as a team. And I was like, uh, it's really no pressure. Just coming to this game, we're the underdog. Nobody has us winning. So uh, anything we do from now on, uh, nobody expected it. So just going in with that underdog mindset, trying to uh, prove everybody wrong. And really, we wear the warm up shirt. It's just us. It's us versus uh, everybody. So just, just this group. Our next question comes from Pat Rooney. Pat, your line is open. You can ask your question. Uh, hey, Jabari, uh, is this as good all around as you guys have played for, for 40 minutes this season? Uh, can you repeat your question? Hold on just a second. Pat, is your line open? Yeah. Can you repeat that, please? Me now? Uh-huh. Hey, Jabari, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Just wondering if this is as good a 40-minute performance as you guys have put together this season. Yeah, uh, I, I think so. It's definitely up there. Um, later on in, in the season, our shots weren't really falling like they were tonight. And we said eventually they would fall. So just keep trusting the process. And tonight, we had several guys get hot. Uh, so. Definitely one of our best shooting performances. Defensively, we all locked in. And the, the uh, motto today was just going in and playing, playing happy. Like we, so this is some of the seniors, this is uh, their first appearance here. And so I'm blessed to be here. And I just want to enjoy this moment because you never know uh, when you're going to be back. So they said, just come out, smile, have fun while playing the game. Uh, one of the things we did in the Pac-12 championship, we were too tense. We had too much pressure on our shoulders. So. Just let, just let all that go. Just our brothers, just lock in and uh, just play, play free. Our next question comes from Pat Graham from the AP. Pat, your line is open. Hey, Jabari, thanks for taking the time. Um, I guess a lot of people were saying maybe you guys might lose this game because of the Georgetown mystique. I guess, how did you guys keep that out of your minds? And I guess maybe how much did you know about Patrick Ewing and uh, how nice was it to beat Georgetown? It was, it was really good, especially with them winning uh, their championship and their conference. Uh, everybody thought they were hot. They were on a roll, and they had us losing this game. But really, we just focused on our group, focused on what we can control. And like all our guys believe, if, we, if we're playing at the best, uh, our best basketball, then not too many teams in this country could beat us. Uh, we could guard. We have the most versatile guys. We can guard pretty much every position. We can score in so many different ways. It's just. We're a dangerous team, and a lot of teams can't run with us. And uh, there's just so many skill set skill sets that we have, and the seniors they just lead us. So uh, just just with all that, it is it, really hard to beat us, I believe. Our next question comes from Justin Michael Guerrero, and your line is open. Jabbar, you guys were so good from three tonight, and. You know, strangely enough, it really didn't seem like Georgetown was getting a lot of hands in your faces, especially early on or contesting shots. Um, I don't want to go as far to say as they were daring you to shoot the long ball, but it didn't really look like, especially with how good you guys were uh, from deep, that they were doing much about it. Uh, what were you seeing defensively from them? And uh, was there kind of lack of pressure? Was that at all encouraging and you guys really wanting to get up those three pointers? Yeah, uh, I was definitely surprised. I noticed it when I first caught the ball, he was kind of far. I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, uh, to wait it out. Let's see how he continues to guard it. And then we ran a couple of plays that came to me, and I just uh, found, found myself getting wide open. And I thought surely after the first few um, that they would get a hand up, and then I just kept finding myself open. And I was, I was a little confused. Um, maybe that was part of the scouting report, or I don't know what was going on. But I got open shots, and just like I continue to say, it's my job to knock them down. And, I've been able to do a good job at that. 
Next question is from Mark Kisla. Mark, your line is open. Hey, Jabari. Um, when you and everybody else on the team, including Dallas Walton, are, are, are channeling their inner Steph Curry. Um, do you get a look in each other's eyes like it's going in? Or what the heck was happening in the first half? If you shoot 65% from three, you're going to beat a lot of teams. Yeah, um, maybe it's contagious. Uh, I start. I think I started it off. Deshaun, uh, Deshaun kept it going, and then Dallas Next thing you know, Dallas was up hitting threes. And I would have liked uh, Jariah to get hot. That would have just made it even more fun. They haven't, they haven't seen Jariah get hot yet, and they, didn't, they don't want to see Jariah get hot. But if that, if that would have uh, happened tonight, you would have seen more threes go in the basket. Our next question is from Stefan from the Indianapolis Star. Your line is open. Jabari, you mentioned the, the senior leadership there a little bit. Uh, I know McKinley ends up with 13 assists. I was the fans chanting MVP after the game. I mean, just how much does he bring to this offense and, and to the team from a leadership perspective? Uh, can you repeat that question one more time, please? Uh, just just ask about McKinley and, and what he brings to this mm -hmm. offense uh, as well as, you know, the leadership uh, standpoint as well. Yeah, there's so much that I don't, I don't even realize yet playing with him. Uh, I'll probably see it next year, but just, just having him initiate the offense, it just makes my job easy. Uh, I really don't have to do too much. I, he just finds me when I'm open. Um, when he shoots the, the ball, you don't realize how many people are going after to block his shot. So that helps me get my offensive rebounds. Um, just keeping us in the right mentality, keeping us composed. He's been um, in like so many situations and his experience has carried this team. So it's just a blessing to have somebody like Ken and somebody like all these seniors that uh, we have on this team, especially with it being my first year playing uh, college basketball. Our next question comes from Ron Bailey. Ron, your line is open. Thank you. Ron Bailey, HoyaReport.com, part of the Rivals Network. When you saw them kind of soft drop the big man and pick and roll and really opened up the pick and pop as well as the deep corners through ball movement, I mean, did you, did you kind of like lick your chops a little bit? Because it seemed like that defensive scheme played into what you guys wanted to do. You were getting wide open, wide open shots. Uh -huh. uh, well, originally the plan was for me to just uh, start rolling. And I think mm -hmm. um, my first three came in just like a, a motion set and just me mm -hmm. getting open. So when we seen that they were kind of focusing on Ken and uh, a little bit too much, then we started to run a couple plays that had me getting open for three, and we just attacked that, uh, attacked that part of their defense. So it wasn't really designed for me to just come off and start shooting threes like that tonight. But uh, we just t took what the defense get gave us and uh, just kept going from there. The next question is from Kevin McCaskill. Kevin, your line is now open. Hi, this is Kevin McCaskill Jr. from FP Sports, uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, you shot 90% from the field today, man. How did you feel before the game? Um, I felt happy just listening to my music, just happy with the guys, dancing before the game, getting back to what we usually do. Um, and this, this last, the last game against Oregon State, I felt like we were a little tense, and all the guys know that. So, like I said, just relieving that pressure and remembering it's just basketball and we're supposed to have fun while we're here. It's not supposed to be stressful. And uh, everybody had us losing this game. So we just we just play with a chip on our shoulder and we play free. So I was I got back to my normal routine, um, having fun before for the game, laughing with my guys um, and just, you know, just being relaxed. Our last question comes from John Tittle and John, your line is now open. Hey, Jabari, John Titel from HoopsHD.com. Um, your father played four tournament games back when he was at Louisville and averaged about 13 points a game. My question is for you, what has he told you or taught you about what it takes to win games in March? And how does it feel to know that you're now averaging 24 points a game? You're ahead of him right now. <laughs> uh, it feels good. We didn't, we didn't really talk about uh, March Madness or anything like that, to be honest. He just told me that it was a, a big platform. Um, just, just, we really have uh, not to come out here with any pressure. 
just do what I'm supposed to do, just play the game that I play. Nothing, nothing special. Uh, just do the little things like I always do, and uh, eventually everything will work itself out. So he just it wasn't too much. He called me. He said, I'm not going to uh, fill, your, fill your ear with nothing, but just tell you to just play your game and play stress-free, and that's what I went out there and did. Jabari, congratulations, and best of luck in the next round. Thank you. We'll be joined by Coach Boyle shortly. Again, if you could use the raise hand function. <sighs> Coach, congratulations. We've got a, queue, a few questions in the queue, but if you could go ahead and give us some opening comments. Yeah, you know, the first thing I, I would like to say is that I've got great respect for Patrick Ewing. Um, and Georgetown University and their basketball program. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of ironic that when we got here uh, last Sunday morning at like 2 in the morning and you walked into the team room, um, one of the uh, gifts for the players and everybody in your travel party was a, a book, autobiography uh, from John Thompson, who obviously was a coach at George, Georgetown, recruited Patrick. You know, I read – about the first two chapters, I've, I've been busy with film and stuff, but it's, it's a great read. It's, it's a book that I've really encouraged our players to, um, to read, certainly this spring or maybe this summer. Uh, maybe some of them have dug into it already. But uh, again, what Georgetown University represents and the basketball tradition that they have and, and really the man that John Tam Thompson was, um, I think it's important that we recognize that, acknowledge it, and, and uh, uh, I would encourage anybody listening to to get a copy of that book and read it because, uh, again, it's it's a, uh, he was a special man and I know he changed a lot of lives. Patrick Ewing's was one of them, and Patrick admits that. So I just want to tip my hat to Georgetown. Great. Our first question is from Mark Kisla. Mark, your line is now open. Two questions, two parter. Uh, number one, this is a, a first tournament victory for you in a while, and you and I both had a little more hair back then. So what's it, what's it mean to you? And second, the players have talked about uh, getting into their music and being happy before this game. Do you have music, or do you get, listen to music, or not? No, I do it on my walks, Mark. You know, especially here in Indianapolis through the convention center, I'll put. I just got AirPods, you know, for the first time in my life. I think that was a Christmas gift from my wife. So. Um, uh, I don't listen to it before games. I'm, I'm really kind of locked into, you know, what our game plan is, what plays I'm going to run for who, at what times, and that sort of thing. So, yeah, our players, look, we, we have been a resilient team all year long. Last Saturday night when we played for the Pac-12 championship, we were not ourselves. Um, the guys were, uh, again, a little tense, and I think they were too worried about the end game versus just enjoying the moment and, and, and letting it all hang loose. And we talked about that this, this week, you know, and our players talked about it amongst themselves and in our team meeting uh, that we had on, on Tuesday or Wednesday. It was on Tuesday, I believe. So uh, tonight was a totally different kind of mentality, and we got to keep that. Um, we got to keep being loose, but understanding the game plan and enjoying the moment and not, hey, let it all hang out, pin your ears back, and let's, let's go uh, have some fun. And, and when adversity hits, let's fight through it together. So um, it was. It's this. This team's been doing it after losses all year long. So uh, I don't know why this should be any different. Our next question comes from Pat Rooney. Pat, your line is now open. Coach, if you guys play defense like this uh, going forward, do you like your chances uh, with whatever comes next? Yeah, when we guard Pat, we're really, really good. Um, now we didn't guard very well in the second half. Uh, you know they scored 50 points, and we got to we got to do a better job of guarding without fouling. We put Georgetown on the foul line too much tonight, and and so we got to get our hands back and move our feet a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I I uh, you know defense and rebounding. Now we got out rebounded by one tonight, which I wasn't happy with. But you know when you make shots like we made tonight, it it makes up for so many things, and that's what we have to really understand as a group is that uh, you know on Monday whoever we play if we're not making shots we better be guarding uh, better than we did in the second half in the fir first half we did a really good job of it but defense and rebounding keeps you in every game and then on nights like this when you're making shots like we made you know it's uh, 
it's it's going to be a little bit easier. So, but you know, through this through this tournament, there'll be some droughts, and uh, again, depending on who we play, we got to we got to dial into that game plan. Our next question comes from Justin Guerrero. Justin, your line is now open. Pat, strictly in terms of points in the paint, you guys were plus eight tonight. And I mean, I know you could assume they were going to attack the low post, but just with respect to that part of the defensive game plan, how pleased with you? Were, how pleased were you with the execution of that and uh, just stopping their big guys down low? Very much so. I'm not sure we stopped him. I mean, Wahab had 20. He's a good player. You know, they do a good job in their ball screens looking for him rolling. He rolls and catches and finishes as well as any big we've played against all year long. So, um, but the, the fact that we beat them in, in paint uh, points and he still got 20 is a testament to our guys offensively because we, we wanted our threes to come as, as a result of our paint touches and attacking the rim, whether it was, you know, in transition, whether it was in the half court, and our guys did a good job of that. And, and you know, when we're attacking the rim and finishing at the rim like we did tonight and we're kicking out for threes and making threes, we're a really, really hard team to guard. And, I mean, think about as good as we were offensively tonight, and, and, and Jariah Horn really uh, wasn't a big part of that. And, and we know how good of a shooter Jariah is and how he stretches the defense. Obviously, Jabari was feeling it tonight. Deshaun made some big threes. Uh, Eli made a couple of them. But, um, we, we're going to get Jariah going, and, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be even harder to guard. So, uh, but, but we always want to play inside out. But the threes come as, as a result of paint touches, either by our bigs or by our guards uh, penetrating. Our next question comes from Neil Wolk. Neil, your line is now open. Hey, Ted, is that as good a 40 minutes as you guys can play? You know, offensively, Neil, I think it's, it's pretty close to it. I mean, we had 12 assists. I thought we, you know, we got a little careless there at the end. We didn't handle their press as well as I would have liked to because I think, if, you know, if we would have been a little bit more aggressive, we could have got something on the other end of it. But um, and on the offensive end, yeah, it's as good as we can play. Again, defensively, we can do a better job of not fouling, and we can't give up 50 points in the second half. So, um, but you score 90, you know, 90-some points, and you shoot the way we shot tonight, I mean, it's – Again, it makes up for a lot. So great, great uh, first game, kind of got the jitters out. Our guys were, you know, amped up before the game. There's no doubt about that. But they, and then we got, you know, we lost our poise a couple of times in that second half, but we, we regained it. And uh, credit to our, to our seniors and our, our players for playing with poise. Because we talked about that in the second half, Neil. Play with confidence, play with poise, and play with aggressiveness. And I thought we did that for the most part for 40 minutes. Our next question comes from Ron Bailey. Ron, your line is open. Oh, thank you. Um, Ron Bailey, HoyerReport.com. Talk about the implications of their uh, of their kind of like dropping the big man halfway down the lane on pick and roll. It seemed to really open up your pick and pop and your perimeter ball movement action. Talk about that. It did, yes. And, and you know, I mentioned uh, on our, our radio uh, here with Mark Johnson, you know, Wahab at the five – um, gives us problems in terms of his ability to roll and score in the paint because uh, he's a really good low post scorer and, and, and their screen and roll game is pretty darn good. On the other end of the floor with Wahab, sometimes he shows or he plug, he, tonight he was plugging. We felt like we had the advantage on that in terms of pick and popping. And, you know, we had a couple sets that we were ready to run to pick and pop with our five man, which we normally don't do, but because of – his plugging and, and kind of being in the lane there. We wanted to stretch the defense with our five. And, you know, Dallas made a three, which he's capable of doing. Um, but we also got Jabari, you know, in some pick and pop, especially after he made the first one, you know, out of the motion set. And then, you know, once Jabari makes one, he kind of gets – he's kind of a rhythm shooter. And we ran a couple pick and pop, you know, plays for him because when he was in with Jariah, Wahab was guarding uh, Jabari. And that's a really, really hard – lineup when you have a pick and pop five man and they've got a big guy like Wahab it makes it really really difficult for them especially when our fives are shooting it like like they can and and they did tonight so we tried to expose that as best we could and I think I think our guys did a good job of it we have time for two more questions I believe the next is from Christian Peck Dimmitt your line is now open Christian hey coach Christian Peck Dimmitt Tunnel Vision Sports congratulations on the win 
Thank you. Uh, McKinley Wright had uh, 12 and 5 and then 13 assists. He out assisted Georgetown uh, by himself. How important was he in his ball movement? Uh, for the Huge, because you could tell Georgetown's, you know, defensive game plan, or at least part of it, was to, when, when McKinley came off ball screens, to really make him play in a crowd and not let him score the ball. Um, when that's happened before at times this year, McKinley's gotten frustrated. Tonight he didn't. He just took what the defense gave him. Our bigs did a great job of rolling um, or popping, depending on the on, on the case. But uh, McKinley did a terrific job of just being patient. You know, there in the second half, um, Evans set a high ball screen for him and rolled, and McKinley just kept the ball, kept the ball, engaged the big, and then boom, hits Evan with a pocket pass for a wide open layup. Because again, we were shooting the ball so well, they were sticking with our shooters on the tags. And McKinley just played a really, really heady game from a ball screen read standpoint. It's as, it's as good as he's done all year long with his reads in the ball screen consistently. And, and he didn't get frustrated, you know, with, with, his, with his lack of scoring. And because, uh, I mean, you know, we want McKinley to be a scoring point guard. That's what he is. But you got to take what the defense gives you. And our guys did a really, really good job of that tonight. And our ball, I mean, 27 assists on 34 baskets means you're moving the ball. And it means you're making some shots. Our last question comes from Jake Shapiro. Jake, your line is now open. Hey, Tad, so much is made of uh, upperclassmen guard play this time of year between McKinley always wanting to get onto this stage and the way he played tonight and then what Eli Parquet did today. What did you see out of your guards? Well, they played terrific, terrific basketball. And, you know, those two guys, uh, combined defensively are so underrated because people look at their you know size and maybe you know lack of length. Uh, but Eli Parquet is as good of an athlete you know as we have on our team, and McKinley is just a he's a, he's a uh, he's an all pack 12 level defender. I mean he's one of the top five defensive players in our league, and I know Eli got that award this year. But, you know, McKinley as a sophomore and a junior was first team all league on defense. So we know those two can really guard. Um, Eli's really done a good job of playing his role and taking open shots and making open shots for us. He did that again tonight. Uh, he doesn't force things. Those two guys, uh, we got a lot of confidence in those, in those two guys in the backcourt. And, and they're going to need to play well as this thing advances because you're exactly right, guard play. Uh, means a lot this time of year in this tournament. Coach, thanks so much for your time and congratulations and best of luck. Okay, thank you so much. Just a reminder for our attendees that a replay of the transcript, or I'm sorry, a transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports and posted along with a recording of the press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you for joining us. Your A game and that you were disappointed in that. Can you pinpoint as to why that happened? Uh, you know, if I could, uh, I, I, if I could, we, we would have done a much better job. You know, <clears throat> we just didn't get it done both offensively and defensively. We struggled to score. We struggled to get stops when, when, when we needed to. Try to uh, trap a little bit to try to get them, uh, get the blood flowing a little bit. And that worked a little bit in the second half, but the, the lead was just that big that we couldn't overcome it. Our next is a follow up from Rafael Haynes. Rafael, please go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, I know you talked about being disappointed in the game. I want to ask you, being that this is your first time coaching in the tournament. Did you learn something as far as not just from your team, but just as far as the experience coaching in this magnitude? Well, I mean, every 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 day of life you should learn. And, uh, you know, this is no different. You know, th I think this experience today is going to help me in years to come. And uh, it's also going to help my team. You know, I'd rather be here uh, – in, in this tournament playing uh, for this for, for the national championship then be home watching it um, but I think that you know this definitely there is some learning and learning experience I, I think this learning this experience is going to be going to help me in the long run 
But right now, I, 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 it's hard to, it's hard to, it's a hard pill to swallow. Our next one will come from Kevin McCaskill. Kevin, please go ahead. Hi, it's uh, Kevin McCaskill Jr. from FP Sports out of Springfield, Mass. Uh, your team, your team got four games canceled during the year. How did you guys overcome that that adversity? Um, yeah, four four games canceled in January. Excuse me. You know, we, you know, just like everyone else in in America, we had we had to pause. Um, I think that, you know, we try to keep them uh, locked in, keep them connected, talking to them uh, every day. You know, once once we got out of, of the COVID pause, we were able to uh, hit the ground running. And I think that the way that we were going at that time, we were struggling. We weren't uh, we weren't playing our best ball, and then. After the pause, I think that's when we started playing our best ball. We came, we came together. Uh, we were a more, co more more cohesive team, and you know that helped us. I think the pause definitely helped us. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. Congratulations on the Big East tournament title and um, safe travels home. Thank you. Thank you. We will be joined momentarily by Donald Carey. We are now joined by Donald Carey. Again, for members of the media who would like to ask a question, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of your dashboard to indicate if you would like to ask a question. And when you are called upon, please state your name and affiliation first. We'll go ahead and get started with Ron Bailey. Ron, please go ahead. Okay, Ron Bailey, HawaiiReport.com, part of the Rivals Network. How you doing, Don? Talk about your, your, your team's defensive pressures on the, from the perimeter. They were pretty much able to get every pick and pop and every skip to the corner that they wanted, particularly in the first half. Um, yeah, we didn't defend the three well. Uh, our goal was to make them play inside out, but we just didn't get to the three point line. And they credit to them, they did. They shot about I think sixty three percent from the three point line. Um, but we didn't, you know, we didn't execute on the defensive end guarding the three point line. Okay, thank you. Next, we'll go to Austin Barish. Austin, please go ahead. Hey, Don. Uh, Austin Barish with La Jolla here. Um, obviously a tough loss today, but, you know, when you look back at the season, you know, what do you have to say about this Hoya team and the way this season, you know, played out? Um, you know, just considering COVID, everything was tough. You know, there's a lot of ups and downs, pauses, but every team went through that. Um, I think, you know, it was a good year overall. We found our we found ourselves towards the end of the year, Big East Tournament. Um, but it's just a good group of guys in that locker room. Uh, we, we we came to practice every day, you know. We toughed out those hard times throughout the whole year. So I, I'm just proud of those guys and how we fought through um, and how we played in the Big East tournament. But today, unfortunately, we just came up short. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Bobby Bancroft. Bobby, please go ahead. Donald, Bobby Bancroft, SB Nation. Um, when you transferred back to George, or, you know, back home to the Georgetown area, um, you know, how much does it mean to you winning a Big East title, getting Georgetown kind of back on the map? Uh, it means everything. Uh, the, first, the, the very first conversation I had with Coach Pat, I told him my main concern was just winning. Like, I wanted to come here to help contribute to winning. That was the biggest goal. That's the main thing. Um, I'm a winner. I just, everywhere I go, I just want to win. So that means everything to win, be able to win a Big East tournament um, my first year here, and that's going to be the goal for next year, and then continue to play in the NCAA tournament as well. Thank you. No problem. Next, we'll go to Andy Kostka. Andy, please go ahead. Hey, Don. Andy Kostka from the Washington Times. Uh, what, what kind of challenge did McKinley Wright pose for you guys, just scoring and, and assisting? I think he had 13 today. Seems to be moving the ball really well. Um, I mean, he's just a good player. We knew that they, they kind of played through him. So he was kind of the focal point of our defense, just to stop him, get back in front of the ball and the pick and rolls. But I mean, he just did an excellent job hitting shots when he, when they were there and then finding his guys on the offensive end. Appreciate it. Next, we'll go to Grant Flood. Grant, please go ahead. 
Hey, John, I'm Brent Flood from Insider Institute. My question to you is, was there a player on your team or your opponents that really surprised you today? Um, I want to say a specific player.